We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This will be our last week of going behind hangar doors at the Cedar Rapids Airport. But wait till you see what's inside this hangar. Not one plane made out of metal, not one plane covered in fabric. These are all plastic planes, fiberglass. I bet you've never seen a Velocity put together. Well, let's go talk to the builder and then take a look at a couple of other planes. Tell us what you're working on here and who you are. Sure, my name is John Tweet and uh, this is a Velocity XL. It's a fixed gear version of a Velocity aircraft. It's a single engine, general aviation, and experimental. And how many hours do you have into it? How many hours do you have to go, would you say, just roughly? <laughs> oh, the, you know the joke is 90% done and 90% to go. So um, we've kind of quit counting hours uh, long ago. We, there's so many custom uh, additions that uh, typical velocity can be built uh, in, in a reasonable time frame. This, this one has uh, a lot of... Uh, customized, uh, very, very detailed uh, items in it. So lots of hours. Anytime you deviate from the plans, uh, you're going to add hours to the plans. Fit and finish uh, also is going to affect, um, we are trying to avoid adding a bunch of weight. Usually fit and finish can, can add uh, tremendously to, you know, you can add a lot of weight filler and, and so forth. So. Uh, to, to accomplish that without adding a lot of weight, um, you know, you get a, a lot more sanding involved, a lot more careful uh, work uh, to get things fit. Uh, things like these gaps around here and, and having this all blend in uh, beautifully. Uh, nothing wrong with the way Velocity does it. They, they tend to have four screws through here, through the front, nice countersunk screws, they look nice, and then this fits on. We wanted to make this a little more easily uh, used. Uh, when you have a duffel bag or something, you can throw it in here, single pilot, uh, and there's a latch mechanism, and then it opens up and, and closes, and then we, we sealed it for uh, weather as well while we were at it. That is very nice. Uh, what type of engine will go in here eventually? Uh, we've got a Lycoming uh, IO 540K. Uh, we went with the um, Lycoming has a uh, helicopter piston set, so when we had the engine built, we had it built with the 10 to 1 compression, and then we used a uh, Airflow Performance FM 300, which flows uh, more air at altitude than the Bendix or the FM 200. And then we put a uh, ram air induction system uh, that's all custom designed for the airplane. So How much horsepower would you say that'll be when it's all over and done? Uh, uh, probably around 340 mm. horsepower uh, in that range, give, give or take, you know, a bit. And obviously you don't have to use it all, you don't have to... Right. I wanted to have a, in a density altitude situation have the power available. I did not want the complexity of a turbocharger, um, so right. trade-offs there. What would you expect a cru typical cruise to be? Uh, normally a velocity flies um, about 200 mile an hour, so that works at what is that, 170-ish, 175 knots in uh, cruise burning somewhere between 11 and 13 depending on how, you know, they, the individual airplanes can have different amount of drag, so right. how much fuel you may need. Um, okay. We're doing things like, you may have noticed the gear leg fairing molds. These are work in progress. Uh, quite a bit of work left to do on these. These will be molds, so that'll all be removed when we're all done, but uh, we'll use those uh, 
the aerodynamics of the width to length ratio of the gear leg and the fact that there's some twist in it uh, results uh, in uh, potential for drag. And so we are, this is based upon uh, Gary Hertzler and Terry Schubert. Gary had, and along easy, uh, had come up with gear leg fairings. And I've talked with both of those gentlemen uh, to get some help. Uh, with the design changes. Yeah, it runs a little bit. This is our... Uh... Oh, for, look at that. Wow. So, that that's beautiful. That's all... Look at that. It's a uh, 7075. Okay. Starts as a billet. So, the solid billet of aluminum. And then it's CNC machined. Now, did, does this improve the factory one in one way or another, uh, or is, is that the way that is a factory one? Or? No, we designed you it. You designed it, okay. Yep. Uh, well, I was a team of three people. My uh, brother's a mechanical engineer, and my cousin is an aeronautical engineer. Okay, so right. <laughs> now, but now, I was went it, to school for electrical engineering, but that doesn't mean I know anything about mechanics, but... Um, it does allow me to run the software pretty, pretty decent. Oh, okay, there you go. And so yep, I can yep. run the reports, and I had my cousin, uh, who understands the numbers. Tell you, it was strong yeah. enough and everything. No, knows yeah. where, and then we, we adjust strength. So, so what we've had yeah. is... Uh, That's the factory uh, one down here. One of the fellows that I knew is named Andy Millen. Uh, had his front fork fracture on him. It's a broke. broke. So was this is also aluminum? Uh, it is as a cast part. number of benefits of this particular fork. I mean, it's, right. uh, uh, it's been designed from a, a, we use finite element analysis. So we know where the weak areas are. We know where material should be and where it can be removed safely. And then we also use the FAA uh, loading requirements for certified aircraft. Okay, right. Um, and a cast product needs, per FAA guideline, there's a 3x multiplier. I've never seen so much fiberglass in one spot. Yeah. Okay. And there you have it. it. The world is filled with very exciting builders and their aircraft. We're just going to have to pick another airport in another city and start taking a look behind their doors. Well, until next time, everyone, please, back to building. <laughs>